Hey guys, Brian here from Liquid Concepts. So today we're gonna talk a little bit about paint guns, how to set them up, what knobs work with what, and pretty much how to use them, all right? So I'm gonna quickly go over these and then I'll just pick one to kind of show more or less everything about it. But every paint gun is made differently from Sada to Iwata to Harbor Freight to Home Depot. They're all made differently and they all have different knobs in different locations. So first let's kind of dive into what do the knobs do and why are they there, all right? Um, so the first one that you'll probably notice the more often of the of any of them on the more cheaper style guns is you'll have a some type of pressure uh, gauge and the regulator right here built onto the gun or as a fitting that you can hook into the gun. Now there's nothing wrong with that. It tells you your air pressure, everything like that, you're good to go. Now the next one on a lot of the higher end ones um, then you start getting into either built-in air regulators or even digital regulators. So moving up from this, uh, we've got this DeVilbus SRI Pro. Now this one does not have a gauge, but it does have a air regulating valve that's built into it so we can adjust it back and forth and we can control the air that's coming into the gun. So then that way as it comes in, we control it and then it pushes everything out through here. So really easy hands-on uh, a lot more compact as you can see from this one to that one now the next one of course like i was saying before is a digital gauge so one like this this is a, a more higher end sada it's a 4000 and um, so we've actually got a digital gauge so whenever we hook the air pressure into it it actually comes up with a digital gauge that tells us how much air pressure that we're running and so that way you can quickly and easily tell exactly what you're spraying so yeah those are nice to have but is it worth the money that's probably going to be up to you if you're just starting out probably not just because you can get a little bit lower grade gun for a lot less money of course everybody will argue uh, sodas are better, iwatas are better. Um, a lot of it is is just pick what gun fits you best. And so we won't really go into a lot of that, but mainly this is more for just showing you what the controls are, where they are, as well as what they do. So um, we'll go ahead and pick this DeVilbus SRI Pro. So we'll set these two guns off to the side and we'll pretty much start from here. So. With the paint gun like this right here, as I was saying before, you have the air pressure that you can adjust. So back it all the way out, you got full air pressure. Whatever line pressure you have coming in, that's how much you're gonna be pushing through the gun. And of course, you can always regulate it down just like that. So next thing coming up into here is you have your fluid control. Now, one thing to always remember is, is that the fluid control right here is always gonna be in line with the actual tip itself. So going straight across right through here, you can see that you've got your fluid control and it's straight across from where the tip is. Now, what's good about this is that if you screw it in like this, you have your air that you can push and then you have your fluid, all right? So at this point, we have this much fluid that's coming out of the gun. Now, if I back this off like this right here, now I have a lot more fluid that I'm pushing out of that gun. So depending on the way that you spray will depend on which way that you need to move your fluid adjustment out. So if you're spraying very fast and let's say that you have a part and you're spraying like this right here and you're just going to town with it, you may be backing off that fluid a lot more just because you need a lot more coming out because you're moving a lot further, uh, a lot more ground, all right? Um, but if you're a slower painter, that's not a problem because you're still getting the job done. But what you need to do is, is crank this down, don't let as much fluid come out, and then that way you can still get a nice, smooth, even, wet pass all the way through, whether it be your paint, your primer, your clear coat, and now you've got the gun set up to the way that you spray. Okay, so we've got our air nozzle here, we've got our fluid control here. So again, backing it out, lets more fluid come out, pushing it in, turning it in like that, doesn't allow as much fluid to come out. So coming up to the top here, we have our fan adjustment. So in this model right here, 
the fan adjustment is on the top. So if I undo this all the way out, that makes my fan wide open, just like that. Now if I take this and I screw this all the way in, it is a little bit long, but if I screw it all the way in, the fan goes from being wide open like this down to pretty much a dot, just like that. And so we take that wide open fan, drop it down, and then now it is pretty much a dot going into it. So you won't really use this a lot, but you will use it whenever you're trying to get into hard to reach areas. So like in our, in our profession, um, uh, deer skulls are a really good thing that you'll probably use this a lot on. Also, if you have something like an air vent or something like that that you're trying to get into, or even grills that have uh, a lot of little intricate areas, especially wheels, those are always a really big one. Um, you can adjust that fan because if you need to pinpoint that paint, primer, clear coat right in one spot, this is where you do it. So in this case, this fan is down to a dot, just like that. Now, if I open it back up just a little bit, that dot turns more into an ellipse to where now it's just a little bit open. So it goes from being a circle and then more back into an ellipse shape. And so you'll see that here in the video uh, on just me spraying just a few things. Now, if I back this all the way out, like this right here, then of course we have a wide open fan and whatever size fan that the gun puts out, that's as big as you're gonna be getting. Now, you can also adjust the fan another way and that's by how far you are away from it. So even though you have the fan wide open, if you're this close, you're only gonna be getting about this much of a fan. Now, if you're this far away, you're gonna be getting a lot bigger fan. So the adjustment of how far away you are on the gun, that's definitely gonna be a big factor. So, moving from here on up, now of course, on this gun, we have our PPS cup adapter. And so, of course, we just put the, uh, uh, the cups on right here. We can change the size of the cups depending on the job. And so, they set down on this right here. Now, if you have a cup on your gun, then of course, your cup would just be sitting there. You pour all of your material into your cup, you're ready to spray. Um, we use a lot of different colors all the time, so we choose to use the PPS cups. Everybody's got their own preference, but it's strictly up to you on that. So now let's talk a little bit about the tips and the nozzles on these things. So first thing you can see is, is you have your two air horns that are right here. Now, the one th cool thing is, is that right now, as this air horn is sitting here, if I was spraying apart, my fan would be straight across, just like this. So the easiest way to remember it is, is that if you want to paint up and down, just like this, your air horns need to be going up and down. If you want to paint left and right, like this right here, then you need to turn those air horns left and right, so then that way you can paint left and right. So that turns your fan to give you a fan that's more like this, instead of like this, and then now you're just painting a big stripe that's probably going to run. So, if you want to paint left and right, air horns go left and right. You want to paint up and down, twist your air horns up and down, now you're ready to go. So, also too, if they are a little tight, it's not a big deal, this ring will loosen off right here, and you can take and you can spin these in any direction that you want. So if you want to put them sideways like that, whichever, doesn't matter, you can spin these whichever way that you want to go as far as painting. Most of the time, it's either going to be straight up and down or left and right, but you have the ability to choose either one. And so, of course, the other thing that you're gonna have is, is that you've got your tip. So, of course, tip size is pretty important because are you gonna be spraying a really thick paint or are you gonna be spraying a really thin paint? So, of course, the lower tips will be spraying the more thinner um, actual parts that you're spraying. So, uh, if you have a really thick primer and you've got, say, a 1.0 tip, it's not really gonna work too well. It's just gonna spit it out. If you have a 1.4, a 1.8, something like that, that's gonna work a lot better on spraying a thicker primer. Now, base coats, clear coats, things like that. In this case, this gun is a spot repair gun, so it only has a 1.0 tip on it, so it works really well for the majority of the stuff that we do, so that's why we use these a lot. Um, but, depending on whatever part or uh, that you're spraying, or also, too, whatever coating that you're spraying, 
that will depend on the tip size that you need to use. So you can always check your uh, local technical data sheet. It should tell you a, a recommended tip size. And most of the time it's around 1.2 to 1.4, 1.5 to 1.8, depending on what coating that you're actually using will depend on the tip size that you've got. So now that we've came all the way up and over, now we're back down to the actual trigger itself. So the trigger is going to be a two-stage trigger. So whenever you pull it once, you have air. You pull it twice, you have air and fluid. So let it off, you have air, and let it off again, you have nothing. So if we back this out with our fluid, so now we can have air right there from this pull, and then we have fluid all the way from that pull. So if we just want to spray air, maybe we want to dry something off very quickly, we can just hold down that button right there and no fluid is going to come out. And then the good thing is, is that this has a stop on it, wherever it is, whether it's backed out further, pushed back in, doesn't really matter. But the nice thing is, is that you can get consistent results every single time. So the more and more that you spray, the more comfortable you'll get with how fast you go and how far away you are from the part. And so by having this set at a certain uh, depth out or in will always give you the consistent results that you're always looking for. So a nice wet coat or maybe a dry, a uh, little bit of just shading, whichever you want, you can adjust it right there and then you're good to go. And then that way, whenever you're using the trigger, you always pull it all the way back. So if I'm pushing this, I go once for the air and then I go all the way back and I always pull it all the way back. Now, as you can tell, as I screw this in, my trigger is going back inward. So, and then if I unscrew it out, my trigger is going back further in like that. So depending on the way that you spray, will definitely depend on how far in or out you have your actual um, your fluid nozzle. All right, so we've got some paint in here. We're gonna go ahead and uh, shoot this real quick. So with the air horns, of course, the air horns are going left and right. So that means that we're going to be painting left and right. And our fan is going to be going up and down. And so you can see by that, whenever we put it down right here, you can see that our fan is going up and down like that. So then that way, if we were painting something, we would be moving just like this right here. All right, so again, if we take and we turn these air horns like this right here, where they are going up and down, then that means, of course, you're going to be painting up and down just like that. But now your fan is going to be going left and right. So whenever we spray this again, you can see that the fan is going left and right. So if I was painting a part like this, I would actually be spraying just like this right here all the way down. So the other thing is, is we've got a wide open fan like this right here. And so of course we have our fan nozzle completely out. So we have a wide open fan. Now, if we screw this in, like what I was showing you earlier, and then we spray this, you can tell that I've got a lot more air coming out. All right, and so what we're gonna have to do is we're going to have to adjust our, our air down because we don't want as much coming out. So we want it back to around a normal sound. And so then we also want to adjust the fluid because if we use the same fluid and we pull, you can see how it just literally puddles just like that because I've got so much material coming out of them. So again, with our fluid adjustment, we want to screw that in a couple of turns or so and then test it again to make sure that you're getting a good dot. So now we can go from a wide open fan to literally a dot just from changing our fan control. And again, we can also increase that just a little bit if I wanted to go a little bit more and then if I wanted to go a little bit more so we can adjust that from a dot back up to a fan just by controlling how far we screw this in or out all right and so then again as I was showing you before we have our fluid control so if we have this much right here and I pull it down I'm only getting that amount of fluid coming out of the gun. So if I take this fluid control again and I back this out, let's just say three turns, and I do the same thing, now I've got a very good 
wide open fan as well as I have plenty of fluid coming out to get a good wet coat. So again, adjusting this right here will give you that determining factor of how much is going to come out of the gun. So we can also adjust our air pressure if we needed to go up with it. We can go, we can go up with it or we can go down with it just depending on the job and how we need to set up the gun for whatever part that we're spraying. So. Hopefully this has gave you a pretty good idea on the basics of a paint gun, how to adjust them, and what knobs work what. Now, of course, every gun is different, just like what you saw in the previous uh, little video there, showing the three different kinds. So we have one like this, and this is pretty much the standard of what most paint guns are. But if you take a look at this right here, it does look a little bit different. And so you'll see that we're missing this top one compared to this right here. And so what they've done is, is they have actually taken and moved the fan control to right here. So now we actually have a quarter turn fan control that's wide open or shut and then vice versa. So um, on this one right here, you have wide open right there and then you have fully into just a dot right there. And so it makes it quite nice because as you're spraying like this right here, you can adjust it on the fly. So a little bit more higher end gun, but you get a lot more capabilities of adjusting that while you're still spraying all of your coating. And so the other thing is, is you'll notice there's not a knob from here like what was on the SRI Pro. Not a big deal. They've actually moved it to right here. So again, there's subtle differences between guns and the manufacturers but they're all pretty much the exact same they do the exact same you just have to see where the different controls are so again of course even on a high-end gun you've got your fluid nozzle right here which is always going to be right in line with the tip itself and so we can adjust that out we can adjust that in depending on how much we're spraying will depend on how much we need to adjust it in or out and like I said before air adjustment we've got it right here we can turn it one way or another and then on this one we can actually read the gauge on how much psi that we're spraying on the other one you either have to have a gauge on it beforehand or go by sound everybody's different but it's strictly up to you on how you set that up so hopefully this has gave you a pretty good idea on the differences on some of the paint guns some of the knobs what they do how they work and also how to set that up so um, if you've enjoyed this video definitely give us a thumbs up and also too if you haven't subscribed already definitely hit the subscribe button we'd love to have you subscribe to our weekly tips and tricks and that way you can always learn more about the custom coatings that we offer as well as making yourself a better coding person so i'm brian from liquid concepts and we'll see you guys next time